Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for coming here. This is a session about data, and data is becoming one of the most important things in cities and organizations alike. Uh, data is being used not only for increasing the performance and increasing the efficiency of our systems, but also for doing new things, and more recently, for driving participation and uh, reading the participation of citizens. We have a nice panel today. <laughs> we have uh, uh, Konstantinos uh, Champidis, he's a chief digital officer from Athens, and he's going to talk uh, about uh, the new initiatives that they have in Athens about data and so on. And then we have uh, two platforms. Uh, one is Stefano de Panfilis, that is uh, the Fireware platform, uh, very well known, uh, very well known down so in Spain because of Santander and so on. One of these <laughs> big platforms that we know, Jose Antonio, <coughs> Jose Antonio Rubio uh, from Indra, that they also are going to present a platform, but more in generic terms, how can we use real time data and so on. And finally, we will have Igor Calzada, that is going to provide a more a vision of what will be the governance of data across Europe? Uh, data revolution, uh, uh, data sovereignty, all these issues that worry all of us. So let's start and contest Dino, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. So today uh, I will speak to you for uh, a new initiative that we have in Athens, uh, which empowers the openness of the city, open data, and open infrastructure. So how we want to open not only the, uh, the data of the city, but the infrastructure of the city. So um, Athens. Um, managed to overcome the economic crisis, has caused and gradually develops its digital strategy for the first time. So we emphasizing in the follow, following five pillars, networks, open government and open data, engagement, uh, engaged citizens, education, uh, so to speak digital skills, uh, and uh, entrepreneurship and innovation, how we are going to empower and enable innovation in the city. So let's face the problem. In the pillar of entrepreneurship, our goal is to develop the digital uh, potential of Athens with the development of new jobs, especially for young scientists. You know that Athens has high unemployment. Uh, like the rest of Greece, suffers from the immigration of young entre entrepreneurs and scientists abroad. And the truth is that there are too, not many opportunities in Greece to work. Uh, and of course, so, not so many uh, in comparison with other cities in Europe. Moreover, it's not so easy for the city of Athens to find those innovation solutions that we will work in the difficult urban environment of Athens. I mean that the legal framework in Greece does not allow us to experiment with technology, to try solutions that may not work efficiently, and in particular to describe the problem rather than the solution. In the, con in the procurements of the city of Athens, we are obliged by the Greek law to describe in detail the technology solution we seek while we know well that this process cannot produce innovation. The process has to be overturned, described first the problem, and, and then find the solution. So what we did to open the infrastructure of the city. In order to solve the problem, we had to look for the following things. We had to look for a donor whose money would allow us to test innovative solutions for Athens but with a focus on funding with, well, only on young people in Greece. And of course, we had to, to find large technology companies 
that they have all the R&D experience that we wanted. In order to solve the problem, we had to look, we had to, we, we managed to find uh, the funding from Savras Nyarfos Foundation, a big Greek foundation, and we formed uh, a coalition with Nokia and Cosmote, the largest uh, uh, service provider uh, in Greece, and we created the Athens Digital Lab. What is about? It's an innovative R&D lab for advanced smart city solutions that brings innovation with the city of Athens, supports the creation of solutions that other city of Athens needs, real needs, and upgrade the quality of life of citizens, and supports, of course, youth, youth entrepreneurship, in which way opening data and opening infrastructure of the city. Athens is a lab is more than just a physical space where young engineers are working to develop solutions for Athens. It's an open process through which the municipality of Athens open innovation, seek solutions for the city and by, all, by its own inhabitants. And it offers two very important things, funding to implement their impl uh, the implementation and open field and open data from the city. So we have, we are now in an open call. Uh, we are making open calls in which the municipality of Athens describe a specific problem, a specific uh, way to face a problem in specific areas, not just we have problems. And we aggregate the proposals submitted, we evaluate the proposals, and we select five of them. And of course, with priority to young uh, engineers in Athens. The themes, the, the, the categories that we are seeking uh, solutions and we're providing data and field, it's of course uh, cleaning services, garbage collection, I mean, parking systems, green management, uh, public space management, and uh, fleet management. The benefits. We're giving to the, to the young people for six months uh, not only the physical space to work, but um, technical and business support from Nokia, uh, Cosmote, and City of Athens. Uh, all technical resources that they are going to, to need, software or hardware. Access to, now to Nokia's IoT platform. Um, and real data, real field trials, um, and access uh, to all data of the City of Athens. But you, we, we all know that in theory there is no difference between theory and practice. In practice there is. It's not my saying. Um, we, have, we have to face problems, challenges, and failures. The open data strategy of the city of Athens, the, the open infrastructure that we are seeking, it's not a fairy tale. It's not something with no, with, without problems. Uh, we don't only have to. F we we don't only have to deal with fairies. We have to deal with bad dragons, dark forests, and sometimes with an unpleasant end of the story. Even we fail, we are going to fail, which is not unlikely. The Athens Digital Lab will have created participatory communities among the city's executives and young people in the city. It has created new relationships and new knowledge. Some may consider it, in, it is a curiosity that I think that by the opening the city's infrastructure, strengthening democracy, improving the way that city is governed. And the last, Athens, it's not a typical European city. It's a special case. It is located at the edge of the Western and Eastern world and has been faced the hardest economic crisis from uh, World War II. A new human mosaic in the city forms with the mixing of many different civilizations. For uh, our digital uh, reality, it's a great opportunity. It's not, a, uh, we, we don't have to fear it. Athens must explore the challenge and turn it to an, a real opportunity and gain from this. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Konstantinos. So, Stefano is going to present us Fireware. It's a platform that has been used extensively in places like Santander, and now he's working in Berlin. <laughs> Always some technicians. Good morning. Um, yes, I'm going not to present fiber as such. There were already some presentations in the auditorium yesterday, and also, well, what is going on there? If you find the secrets before, that doesn't work. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm going to talk about what uh, the real topic of this session today. It is quite interesting. Thank you for this invitation, because uh, how to go beyond the, the, let's say, traditional data mining and what we think is clearly important in order to, uh, the way to use data for having smartness. But first of all, of course, we have to understand what does it mean, smartness. It's just a way of looking. So if I w dress in a way or in another way, I feel much smarter than somebody else. It's just that. Maybe does this guy seem smart? Well, of course. Uh, everybody here saying a guy washing a car under a thunderstorm. So from this picture, you may think, well, the guy maybe is not so smart. The issue is that we don't understand why he's doing this in these kind of conditions. Maybe there is something more behind. The issue is that we don't know the full context that is around him, why he took this decision to wash the car under a thunderstorm. So what is the core of everything for us? <clears throat> what is important in order to understand smartness is the context. So for us, <clears throat> being smart means being able to react according to the context that we have around. Okay, this is the, the key point of, of, uh, of everything. So that, and, and this we are experiencing these days, a clear advancement in uh, applications that are, well, we see in this wonderful conference, many of those that are really applications that tell us what to do or what not to do in given conditions at this, at the, uh, at this point. So, <clears throat> but of course, in order to read the context, we have to describe the context. For this, we uh, think that we have uh, defined a model that they follow a, a standard that is called NGSI, but is going to be, is now under the <clears throat> auspices of uh, ETSI, the European Standardization Institute and is going to change the name in a more well, maybe coherent things is going to be called um, uh, context information modeling. But that, that is not the real what it does. So the idea is that with the standard that we have some entities and attributes of those entities. But this is not a database. It's not a repository. It's just a way to describe in a, uh, the context in a way that applications and software can react to it. But it's a dynamic thing in the sense that you collect information, but this, the notions that you have may evolve, so you may add other attributes, other entities, in order to describe other concepts, we say, in order to describe your context, and then against which you want to collect information. What is interesting is that this is not just a matter of collecting and gathering information, but it's a matter of using this information real time. So I want to see the context of now. So it's now it's raining, not maybe in one hour or two hours, or it was raining. And also having all of those information at the right time. At the right time, they have to take the decision. So I have to know now whether this road is going to be a traffic jam or not, or there is an accident of whatever it is. That is important. Also, if I want to go for a walk, I would like to have a sun, not, not something else. So information, real time, 
at the right time. And uh, what if we are able, sorry, to access, eh? there is, okay, to access this, this information in a standard way. This is what is this standard is about. So the standard is about of providing a set of uniform way to access the context, a uniform way to update the context, a uniform way to create new concept in this context so that knowledge evolves. This is the important issue here. And this is what is all about. Why this is important? This is important for many reasons. Of course, I put here in my presentation some easy examples just to, to explain the concept. But, uh, but of course, you can do things much more complicated. Uh, for instance, if the two cities <coughs> here of, um, of Porto and Santander, which is a real case, they share the same information model on how they describe uh, the, 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 the parking lot of the cities, the application that has been built actually was built by one of our uh, one of the SMEs that works using fiber. They was built in, in Porto, was easily exported and used also in Santander. So you have portability of the solution because there is the same way of doing things. Even if, and this is another important case, even if the cities, and I had another example, Ancona in Italy. <coughs> they uh, use different ways of collecting those data. For instance, in Ancona they use uh, parkimeters, so you have an area under control of the parking slots. In uh, Porto they use uh, sensors or cameras or this kind of thing. So a city already had made an investment on, uh, to solve the problem of parking or to take advantage of that. The, the issue is how to leverage this in a way that can be shared. So this here is the context information model. So the model behind is the same. So the cities, they yet uh, share the same model. The applications, they might use the knowledge of that because of course if you have, like in Ancona, <coughs> parking meters, of course you would like to know, you have a probability to find a parking slot that is free. You don't know exactly which parking slot is free. But you have probability of that base, and here it's also important to know context is what is now, but also you might leverage on past experience. So you know that normally at that time uh, you might have this kind of frequency of, uh, of usage of the slots so that you have a probability of that. In other place, you have instead <coughs> the exact parking slot that is free where to go. But they share the same model. So the application, although they might seem different, they they benefit from the same thing. So, so in case you travel from one city to another one, you have the same, the same things. This, of course, is important for, <coughs> for also who invest in creating applications. So for instance, as a new startups, because they can think locally, but because of the sharing of the model, because of the same APIs, they can have global business. Exactly because of this, because they port they can easily port the application to different places. And last but not least, the fact that having an open and shared way of publishing information may really leverage what is most important, is a data economy. Here, the, the, the important issue, and I think other speakers will, will say this more in their presentation, is about the monetization of what we are doing. So data, they have a cost, collect data, but also they are the source of uh, economy. Theory. Also here, uh, uh, there is the fact that having a shared model, you can also benefit from data coming from different, different sources in the, same, in the same city. So final recommendation. So a smart city for us materialize in order, uh, and this is needed in order to have a scalable, platform, of course, if I were it is that, but also it's open source, so it's easy and free to use by everybody. <coughs> and what is important also that those platforms are able to collect data that are uh, heterogeneous, so that they don't come just for maybe sensors, which is of course important, but also for instance for, from social networks, so Twitters or some other stuff that people want to 
share their information and this increased the capability of the system to react. Then uh, the fact that data must be real time and provided at the right time. But also what I would like here to, and I like the presentation of Costas before, what is really important is to have cities that really believe that data are the source of an economy that thought locally can act globally. So you have uh, global bene benefits for that. Because that is <clears throat> the way we can really encourage to have the smart cities and uh, working for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefano. <laughs> now we have Jose Antonio Rubio from Indra. Uh, they have quite a wide experience in platforms and so on, and they want to share with us some of the learnings of this experience. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Jose Antonio. I'm in charge of uh, data uh, and algorithms unit. We work very close to uh, smart city managers at Indra. Indra is the largest IT consultancy services at Spain and uh, Latin America, and we work around the world. And um, I'm going to introduce our experience. I'm not coming here to, to teach you about uh, machine learning algorithms. It's not my, my point. But um, yes, to show what we are doing, managing data in this way, beyond the, the, uh, the data mining rules, beyond the data mining techniques, and how we have, uh, with the confidence in, in data, we support uh, and a, data, a data strategy for, for the smart cities. Well, our main learning uh, in these years is, uh, is this. Data and algorithms brings huge opportunities uh, for smart cities. We say that for different uh, topics like this. Every digital interaction is one potential event to be actuated. Any search in a search engine, any mention in social networks, any uh, transaction in uh, e-administration is an opportunity to understand what the citizens are uh, consuming or searching to be, uh, to be uh, ready to, to act to in front of uh, the problem. Any volunteer person maybe is the, is the best sensor of, the, of city life. Um, it's amazing to, to know the experience of uh, crowdsourcing, for instance, in Australia, hmm, how the people is involved in the registration of, uh, quality, of uh, quality air of the cities. Hmm? Um, uh, uh, this this uh, is, is incredible. How how is the uh, how could they um, get a, 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 co uh, um, a coverage of uh, data around the city? Yeah. Furthermore, the, the the point stations, yeah, the central station that that measuring the the quality uh, of the air. Data traceability ensures future knowledge generation. It's clear that more, uh, more and more you work recording data, uh, recording trace uh, data, you, more uh, you, you, will, you will learn about the city. Hmm? Algorithms are the best friend, not only uh, for data science people, but for governance decisions too. In this uh, moment, in this time, so there's uncertainty to put the confidence what uh, data is explain, explaining uh, in the behavior of the city is really, really important. At the end, data monetization is the, the, the happy end of predictive algorithms. At the end, always are asking who is uh, perceiving the benefits of the, of the, of the data, hmm? who is creating value and who is consuming the value. We are working in different areas, uh, combining uh, diff uh, huge uh, open data sources like uh, satellite images. Uh, we are developing software that is uh, overlapping different layers and coming from uh, satellite images, uh, even um, cadastrian image, to find uh, uh, some real estates um, that are not recorded in, in cadastrian. This is really important because 
is an opportunity of tax uh, harvesting for uh, many, many municipalities mm? in a time of really uh, a risk uh, of, uh, uh, of um, plans based on the, on the budget and on local governance. Another uh, area really interesting to work is green buildings. We are working hard. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, similar uh, with uh, um, image of satellite, satellite images, um, comparing the day and night uh, image to discover the uh, isolation inefficient on the roof in order to locate, uh, locate the uh, amount of energy, um, amount of extra expenses that should be possible to reduce in the city. Hmm? Nearly zero emissions building uh, directive is, is uh, boosting this uh, type of uh, um, experimentations, and we are uh, working uh, with a, a pool of uh, companies, uh, banking com bankings, uh, bankers, uh, insurers, um, uh, and so forth, uh, measuring uh, what is the return of this kind of uh, products. Data strategy is a must to survive. This is the main lesson that we are gathering during the last years. It's critical to, to line up data strategy to government strategy for the legislature hmm? in order to uh, order the efforts that we, we are going to do in data collection, in uh, treatment, and train uh, in, in an uh, algorithms lab to solve uh, real problems. Critical define a, a data governance uh, framework. Obviously, uh, it's uh, necessary to guide currently decisions about uh, organization, about roles, responsibilities, policies, uh, implementation programs, and especially the knowledge generation plan in the city. It's necessary to exchange uh, information to adopt a uh, data standardiz standardization model and doing with, with your partners hmm, to, uh, to be comfortable in the, in, the, in the process. Obviously, this is a, another uh, finding. Work hard and tirelessly hmm, with, with lawyers and on compliance policy hmm, to work comfortable with, with partners, with, with third party. And bet for open uh, innovation based on reusable, uh, reusable data. This is sorry. This is our learning in the open innovation flow with Ecoembes. Ecoembes is the uh, the entity, the firm uh, who manage the uh, waste cycle. Uh, plastic cycle and, and, and paper at Spain. We uh, start defining uh, the main insights that we need to, to solve. The design uh, thinking is the second stage in order to create the, the, the right solution before um, construct prototypes uh, as a part of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, final development process, proof of value, growing product, and finally, major, major product. But the question was, what, do, uh, what to do beyond data mining? So the idea is open business, supported by open platforms, help to find answers to undiscovered questions. This is possible because real time is feeding our, uh, our platform uh, a huge information that it's able to uh, create rules, to create uh, complex urban processing, to react uh, in, inside the day, inside uh, even in minutes. Smart Ways uh, is uh, an example how we are managing not only data coming from uh, uh, containers, coming from tracks, but uh, coming from uh, uh, demographic data in the city, coming from central uh, repertoires, even uh, cadastrian uh, data, in order to, to find correlations where the waste 
uh, where the where uh, the the waste is, is uh, handling, how it's handling, and how we uh, suit to place currently the the containers in the city. We have found very very interesting uh, facts as uh, how is the, the behavior of the different part of the city, of the different uh, types of households, uh, according the kilograms of light plastic, according the improper um, uh, average of light plastic, and how we could uh, change the habits in order to uh, enhance the average, the right average of, of, uh, of, um, uh, of waste. Obviously, the the opportunity to, to, um, to extract uh, uh, entities and classify the conversation uh, able to uh, monitor in real time what is happening in the city. What is the topics that uh, social conversation is carrying? And to evaluate how to measure the sentiment in terms of negative or positive conversation to associate a signal, to associate a, an alert to uh, detect the crisis, potential crisis, and, op and potential uh, opportunities. Well, I need to, to finish. Our resume, our learnings, according to uh, uh, city data strategies, data and algorithms bring uh, huge opportunities. Data strategy is uh, really a must to survive and to win in the party. Open platform is the, the way out to co-create with third party, and it's no magic rules. This is uh, learning by doing. And finally, algorithms, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning engines help to answer unexpected questions and anticipate solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose Antonio. Now we have Igor Calzada. Igor comes from the University of Oxford. Uh, politics is also an integral part of data. Things like data sovereignty, uh, smart evolution, how uh, to manage identities in data are things that are coming to age. So go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Esteve. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for, uh, to the organization of the Smart City Expo to, for inviting me here. I come from the University of Oxford, from the Urban Transformation Program. Um, I, I have asked to be the last one because I think that I should wrap up. Uh, I'm not, I'm, we are not, I'm not an expert in data, but I'm going to talk about context. I really like what, when Stefano presented the context matters because I'm going to talk that the context is changing even the way we should change the way that we should understand data in city strategies. So uh, my key message here today is the following one. I mean, uh, the, uh, in the last four, five years, we've been uh, assessing how some uh, smart cities, they were having some, uh, provoking some transitions in their strategies. So it's why uh, we deconstruct some, some smart city strategies that we call this way of doing that unplugging. I'm going to mention about that. And we realize that in some extent, the technopolitics of data matters. I mean, the, the data, is not neutral at, at all. So that means that uh, some transitions are, are occurring and happening in some uh, cities, and I'm going to present um, a case study research project that we, uh, in which we compare Barcelona with Bilbao in Spain and Glasgow and Bristol in the UK. Uh, and therefore, we realize that the evolution, I mean, how data should be distributed and should be decentralized matters a lot. Um, I'm going to leave two main questions, and is why does a smart uh, devolution matter? And is devolution uh, a smart uh, in a current situation also in Catalonia and Spain when, as you might know, uh, the socio-political debate is really, in brackets, really vibrant, but I think that we need to uh, rationalize in some extent what is going on. So um, let me tell you that uh, we, I mean, we started thinking uh, that we should go beyond the hyper-connected societies, and it's why we thought that uh, we need to deconstruct the uh, smart city uh, discourse. Uh, this is reality. I mean, people uh, cannot live without uh, their mobile phone. 
even more in China, when uh, nobody is really uh, unpacking the value and how data is governed in their cities. But we are not in China, we are in Europe, and I think that in some extent, uh, uh, citizens are much more aware of, 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 of that. So it's why provo provocatively we, we start thinking on the concept of unplugging a smart city, mainly because of the failures in the paradigmatic cases of Mazdar and Songdo in Seoul and Abu Dhabi, um, and some other kind of uh, filming uh, examples as, as movies that they really uh, anticipate w w which are the, the consequences of uh, being living in a hyper-connected societies. So at the end of the day, we should ask whether or not the citizens are happy in this kind of hyper-connected world. And, and, we, uh, and we also should ask um, um, which are the city data strategies, because these kind of graphs that they are showing a perfect uh, unifying uh, vision of smart cities, they are so simplistic from our academic perspective. And as Jeff Mulgan yesterday in the keynote presentation mentioned, I mean, the reality is much more complex, it's not linear, and it's not that reductionist. And we can really see how data is governing Brazil in Rio de Janeiro, uh, also in Jinchuan in China, uh, but also uh, recently in Florence in a European project that we are taking part. And we are all, 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 all the time asking how are these city data strategies being developed? Because in some extent, let me show you the, this kind of rationale of smart cities with three movies. I think smart cities in the European Commission is understood as replicability, which is, in our opinion, is not exactly the good way to do it. Efficiency, that we, we have been hearing in the, in the previous presentations how data should consider efficiency and the life promises of Blade Runner. But, and it's why here my presentation, the key message is that there are some cities like Barcelona that they are having some transition in this data uh, government model. Um, it's why uh, we published uh, an article in the Journal of Urban Technology that at the moment is the uh, fifth most read article that was called Unplugging, the Constructed the Smart City. You can download it uh, uh, because it's in open access. And we tried to analyze 10 dimensions in which some cities were, were uh, having some transitions. Uh, and mainly, and this is the connection with the data uh, debate, mainly because we, 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 we concluded that being digitally connected and plugging is not warranty of being smart. And the second one, that is for me my favorite one, uh, that technology or data is never neutral. Uh, and it has the potential and the capacity to be used socially and politically for quite different purposes. So is why in this stage, I think that, I know that it's very provocative and even more saying that in Barcelona and in Catalonia, but we should politicize the city and how the data is governed in our cities. Because sometimes these strategies has been defined without considering uh, first the needs on usability by citizens, nor socio-technical misalignment within the city. Because the problem is not the technological solutions for social problems, as Eugene Morozov uh, argued. Uh, the problem is that, who, that we should ask who gets uh, to implement them, uh, what, what kind of politics of reform do technological solutions smuggle through the back door? Uh, in this sense, I think that we should also remind of uh, Harari, the historian, the Jewish historian, when he uh, is writing a lot uh, about dataism, the new religion, the dogma of the big data, and I think it's very, uh, very a simple way to uh, describe the reality. I mean, we, the citizens, are becoming a tiny chips in inside a giant system that nobody really understands. And I would ask, nobody is really explaining to us how this big data is being built. So, uh, in some extent, Habermas uh, reminded us that uh, smartness, smartness cannot be more technocratic than democratic, and is why I think that we should uh, unplug and we should politicize. Uh, the smart cities, or as Hannah Arendt also uh, remember that the trouble with the modern theories of behaviorism, let's say the smart cities, is not that they are wrong, but they could become true, and I think this is applicable to data as well. Uh, with this idea, we, we published a book, myself and another um, uh, practitioner from, the IV, IV, from IBM in India, in Bangalore, 
in order to start considering these transitions in many cities worldwide. This is the, uh, the comparative study of, uh, of Glasgow, Bristol, uh, Bilbao, and Barcelona. And in a nutshell, uh, we could say, I mean, unplugging their uh, smart city data strategies, we realized about three main findings. The first one is that the, 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 the city data strategies, they were very different and they were in transitions. And Barcelona is mainly the key case uh, in this, in this compar comparison. The second one is that technology politics of data had, had, have much more influence in their strategies. And the third one, and maybe it's not that discussed, but the devolution uh, and how the data was decentralized was relevant in uh, the city, in data city uh, strategy. So it's why Bilbao could, could be defined as a corporate model in transition. Barcelona at the moment is an anti-corporate model in an uncertain uh, situation. Uh, Bristol uh, could be defined as an open innovation alternative model, and Glasgow as an urban governance uh, transformative model. So in a nutshell, uh, we are working at the moment in Oxford that we should go uh, beyond triple helix. We should also overcome the quadruple helix, because in some extent, some cities are working, and these four cities are de defining by the public, private, academia, civic society, and in some extent, some presentation, as you realized, you capture. They are talking about something else that is, in, my, in our opinion, the fifth elix, that is the social entrepreneurs. We are uh, working in this idea. This is another paper that is going to be published in December in Regions Magazine. And in some extent, this is a data that we we've, uh, we've been collecting uh, in, uh, in some European projects, and we can see how uh, the Three options, the academic, civic, society, entrepreneurs are one third of uh, how uh, influence are some stakeholders in their smart city strategies. So we are working in that, in this uh, hypothesis uh, with Replicate Horizon 2020 with many different cities. We are also working in the Basque Country with municipalities, with mayors mainly. We are also working in the tourism policy uh, in some villages like uh, the one in, in the Basque Country with with the fifth uh, uh, helix. And sometimes we are forgetting about the global north, um, but uh, finishing my presentation, we've been also working with an NGO uh, based in Madrid, Ayuda uh, en Acción. And we should also think about data uh, in these kind of communities that they are not that advanced, that developed than that, because sooner or later, uh, considering the, the how quick and how fast is um, demographic change happening in Africa and in Latin America, we should consider that. So my conclusion is that smart city data uh, strategies will require, con uh, will require considering transitions towards more democratic and transformative smart cities where data-driven city strategies will, will be sooner or later meet technological uh, requirements by multi-stakeholder demands based on the ongoing Pentahelix scheme, uh, which would suggest a more decentralized and distributed data strategies in cities and regions. Regions is why we really think that the smart evolution is going to be in the next uh, policy agenda in many cities and regions, at least in Europe. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor. Thank you very much. We have now some questions. I would like first to, to ask a couple of questions. Uh, also, remember that you can uh, put questions here and also in the micros that you have. I think we have two micros here. Uh, before that, I will ask a couple of questions. Uh, the, uh, the first one is about uh, the platform strategy. Uh, since a decade, many cities have transitioned from being, uh, being providers of services to embracing a platform strategy. And um, for many cities, what they did uh, was, well, let's build it, and they will come, and something wonderful will happen. <laughs> well, it didn't. <laughs> in many places, it didn't. That's, that's a reality. This is what, what has been happening in, in the last uh, 10 years. In some cities, they did. I mean, if you are in New York, probably wonderful things happen. If you are in San Francisco, probably wonderful things happen. If you are in Ganoyers or in a small city, well, that's not the same thing. Uh, what is your opinion? What can be the remedies? What can be the solutions uh, to fix this problem of the platform strategies that many cities have? 
you all have some experience here. Anybody wants to? It works? Yeah. It's working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. That, that is a challenging question. <laughs> uh, I think I, what I was my last <coughs> recommendation is that the cities, they believe in what they do with that. So they have a program, they have a strategy, as also Igor mentioned. So this is the matter, because just putting technologies there and not knowing what to do with them, well, it's a waste of time and <laughs> maybe issues. So the strategy is the key element of, for all of that. So what to do that? And, but also, there are some barriers that need to be understood, because of course, the data might be there, but which data they are, which is the quality of the data, who owns the data, which are the conditions under which you can use the data, how they can be accessed. But this is, again, is part of a strategy. So what we want to do with all of those things, um, the way we want to use that. And these are things that need to be thought before uh, any, any real uh, technological aspect that is to be taken. This is why the use of uh, platforms like ours or others that are <coughs> allows a smooth adoption, it becomes critical. Because it's not just a replacement that we have to do. It's not just a new technology after the other. It's just to leverage in the culture of the city into the strategy of uh, new uh, thinking. But what we, this, this need to, to be done. So I think that is the, the, the core message. A strategy is needed. Otherwise, yes, uh, technology per se, they do nothing. Maybe in, in addition, I, I think um, local governance realized that it's impossible to grow, um, uh, increasing the, the, the on-premise stack to, to solve uh, the problems they are considering to, to solve. So uh, at the end, uh, the, the vision of uh, an open platform uh, is, uh, is, is really proposing a, a solution, uh, incremental solution uh, to, to deliver uh, some critical services or new services that uh, born in the in a, in a open platform uh, ambience with a co-creation uh, view, with a co-creation uh, ecosystem. And this is the more uh, convinced way that I think uh, is is possible to transform the, the the challenge that you that you said. Mm -hmm. Any more opinions? I mean, uh, I would fo in, instead of focusing on the what, I think that in, in my humble opinion, we should focus on the who. And when we are talking about the open, I would I would like to really know what is going to take part in this open ecosystem, open space, open is why I think that. According to our uh, research, we, have, we are realizing that some cities, the ones that are much more advanced, are those that are uh, including different, a uh, big diversity of uh, stakeholders. Instead of just focusing on the public-private partnership, uh, we should identify how academia and how civic society and entrepreneurship should be included in the, in the strategies of the cities. Oh. You want to say something? Yes, in many cases, um, uh, cities' data strategies and digital strategies uh, had failed because they focused on, uh, let's be uh, straight, uh, they focused on buying platforms, uh, even expensive ones, but they didn't focus on the real use uh, in the real life of uh, the citizens or the inhabitants. So uh, that's why we, we, we shouldn't focus only on developing um, large systems, complicated systems, but uh, enabling uh, digital skills uh, on the, the all categories of population, on the minors, on the elderly, on the unemployment. If you don't have you, if you don't have the users to use the platforms, the complicated platforms, applications that we are developing, you're not to have a smart city. You only have an application and a platform. My, my second question is about uh, the one of Igor and so on. Uh, many times we have these shiny uh, data strategies in cities that go about, we are going to empower citizens, we are going to make them more innovative, we are going to uh, bring innovation everywhere in the society and co-create with citizens and so on. And uh, at the end, we end up with a dashboard. A shiny one, full of colors, uh, cool graphics, 
with the dashboard, maybe an app for finding a parking, and that's it. Uh, what is, what, uh, what's the problem? What is fading here? This is why I was focusing, and I know that it's a very provocative uh, comment, but in the how we should politicize and how we should democratize, because at the end of the day, we can create a bubble of a smart city in our understanding, from our technological understanding, but we are not connecting the real needs that we are talking about. So this is why the real smart city is going to be the one that is going to overcome this barrier between citizenship and decision, decision makers. So as long as we are going to achieve to um, have citizens as decision makers rather than data providers, I think that we are going to avoid this flashy, useless technology that is not going to have any reaction, any positive reaction by citizenship. That would be my simple answer. I don't know what I'm think. sure that you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, uh, I have to reply to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else? <laughs> no, well, somehow I agree, but this is why you have to introduce in the platform that you want to use the democratization of data concept. That is the key point. Agreed. That is the key. So this is what we think we are doing. Of course, we are, since we are an open association and things, we are happy to receive comments, suggestions, and work together on that. But this is the, the, the key element. <coughs> so yes, this I agree. But exactly because you have this aspect in, in platform you can get that in the sense that of course you have to understand but you also have to make this available in, in, in concrete terms so um, <coughs> uh, the, what I also I said during the presentation maybe I didn't, I didn't explain this well is exactly the fact that if the um, we can elaborate on the fact that the data they should be uh, an engine of transformation themselves but the platform should allow that, but also there are the intention for this. And of course, there are aspects that sometimes they were put, sometimes artificially, sometimes not, but there are legal aspects that also need to be, to be understood well. Because sometimes the nice data are not the data that are shown, mm -hmm. because they are kept private by some organizations. And this is also another <laughs> important element. To continue uh, Igor's um, thought, uh, I would like to, to imagine cities in a decade or two and question ourselves what the commons of the future cities are going to be. What are the things that we, we, we will have free and open access in a decade or two? I, it's a very critical question because we have to plan and to think about uh, the data of the future, the, the, the internet access of the future, because it's not something that it's a problem that has solved, um, and the applications of the future. And, and this is a democracy uh, question. It's not uh, uh, a technical question. Well, I, I mentioned it before that um, it's really critical to al the alignment between the open governance strategy and uh, uh, the, the, the open data strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, um, the really, the really um, m m fact is how to uh, improve um, rules, how to improve uh, actionable rules when you discover uh, between data and opportunity or, or a risk. Uh, I saw before uh, some example. Uh, how to react uh, in terms of, of very fast time to reduce or to attend uh, um, a crisis uh, when you need to, to deliver uh, uh, resources to attend an accident, to attend a critical uh, uh, happen in the, in the city, hmm? for instance. But obviously the, the word here is optimization because uh, there are a lot of resources, there are a lot of, of cost supporting, the, for instance, the, the, the smart waste vision. And, and finally, the reduce of, of carbon dioxide, reducing the, the movement of trucks, reducing the, the treatment and the lesser treatment of, of waste. Hmm? So uh, the, the final point is not the dashboard. <laughs> yeah? it's, it's actionable data to transform, to change the, the, the problem. Uh, 
I have a question from the audience. Uh, it's about the reaction of the Igor presentation and says, I would like to hear the other speakers on the matter of unplugging. It. Uh, how do they feel it visible in their direct surroundings? So what is your opinion about unplugging? <laughs> The question is, uh, Igor mentioned the case of unplugging cities. Maybe you, you, want, you could clarify first a little bit what uh, do you mean by unplugging and I mean, so unplugging on. Unplugging was, uh, was once again very a provocative way to say we need to unpack the stakeholder mapping, the stakeholders. Not It wasn't advocating a non-technological -te city, but I mean, once that we know which are the key players in our city, then we need to connect, we need to plug in them. That was the main thing, because in our assumption, the concept of smart, city, smart cities, they were just, first of all, providing solutions without even knowing who, was, who, who were the agents and, and the key players in the, each city. So it was, first of all, unpack, unplug, and then plug in the stakeholders. Yeah. So it wa is why in this plugin, I, nobody has mentioned that, but I, I think that we are working on that. We have really good experts in, in, in the smart cities, in technology. I think it's key. That I mean, business, I mean, corporations, and universities, and public authorities and civic society should work together, mm -hmm. because we have very different kind of uh, perspective about how our cities uh, should build. But we, I mean, we we don't need to to provide a real solution because it's, it's something that is is going to be a collaborative uh, yeah. outcome. Let's say. So, yes, <clears throat> I, I think I understood this way. So the unplugging means that. Everybody could plug me being an actor, yeah. and this is what should be, yeah. of course, according to the role, and the cleanness of the role is also important. But this should be the case. So it's not that we plug blindly to what is offered, mm -hmm. but we should be able to to act not only as data provider because whatever we do is data, provi data provision, but also in terms of uh, being actor in what we want or what uh, we can change the way the provision is made and so on. So to be an actor, in that, then this is unplugged. I guess I understood this way and, and I like the provocation. From a point of view, the, the uh, local governance um, are really learning to, to listen, <laughs> are really learning to, to discuss uh, with, with citizens and the rest of, of stakeholders in more and more uh, cities. Mm? It's a problem of, of level of maturity to unplug your, your rules. Mm? To, to be ready to, uh, to understand what are the really concerns in the city uh, before you plan your legisl leg legislature uh, priorities, mm? is my, my opinion. And data and technology is uh, 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 feeding uh, knowledge uh, and, and, and putting the voice of, of, of citizens in the table. Uh, one last, we, we don't have more time, but one last question, very short, if you can. We have another question about the subject of data sovereignty, that is an important one. So uh, how do you think that, uh, is there uh, really a, a way to ensure privacy and to protect the data of the citizens in this world where our data is in the hands of everybody but us? Uh, Google has it, Facebook has it, the only ones that we don't have it is us. <laughs> what do you think? I have just avoided one slide because maybe it was someone in, my, in the audience, but it was our Google Urbanism, the last <laughs> video. But it was for me enough. I'm using that in all my presentation. I mean, I think this is the key thing at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, as you are saying, in five, ten years' time, citizens are going to request, uh, demand directly to be aware of their... I mean, this, this idea of data is oil. Yesterday was a really good article in BBC, I think, saying that, no, no, it's not oil. I mean, it's not this kind of concept that, uh, I mean, data is not exactly the same thing as oil. So I think, in some extent, the city strategy should, should evolve to this data sovereignty in some, in some extent. So that is why I think Barcelona, I think it's quite risky, because for me, the problem with Barcelona, and maybe someone is going to, don't like what I'm going to say, but it's the problem how to engage with the private sector. For me, this is the key thing. As long as the local authorities are going to make sure that they, they are going to uh, have the private sector, the SMEs, and the multinationals inside the strategy, the data sovereignty, I think that that, that is going to be a, a very, very uh, powerful step. Wow. <laughs> um, 
Sometimes uh, I think this is an, an extremely important aspect. Some other times, let me make me, because I'm a mathematician, first of all, I'm not a computer scientist. I'm even more, a bit more political. And um, so let me make a counterexample. Um, we have all cameras everywhere. Most of them are private. It's not from public institutions. But when a crime arrives, the cameras are used in order to pick the guy. And normally, they work. So what we want to do with that? We should not allow to use the use of this kind of data. So data sovereignty, yes, it is important. But we have to be uh, careful about what we mean and what are the consequences and where, is, where are the mechanisms for that. So the fact that we exist, we provide data, whatever we do. So I don't know. It's a difficult thing. That it's not. It's much more sociological so, so than technical. Any more opinions? No? OK. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much, our speakers, for the enlightening speeches. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.